kingdom, your majesties. I'm your host, Queen Ash, and on this channel, we focus on helping women, especially women of color, become quality kingdom queens through faith, femininity, and lifestyle excellence. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, press that bell notification so you will not miss your weekly royal sessions. In today's video, we are going to talk about a subject that is very near and dear to my heart and I'm sure is very near and dear to yours because you've navigated to this video. We're going to talk about self-esteem. Now, self-esteem is very essential and is very vital to our livelihoods. Not just as women, but men as well. But since this is a feminine channel, we're going to focus on the, the female or the womanhood aspect of this. Now, it is important because self-esteem influences everything around us. It influences our everyday lives. It influences the choices and the decisions that we make. And it's very um, important for us to pinpoint and talk about the ideology of self-esteem. Because let's face it, women, we are the, we are the epitome or we are the representation of what young women will look forward to. And especially women of color. We need to be the representation that we want other women, especially young black girls to look up to when they are looking at feminine quality kingdom queens. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna break it down into a couple of categories. So. The first thing we're going to talk about, what is self-esteem? Then we're going to move into how self-esteem becomes low self-esteem. Then we're going to talk about how low self-esteem can hinder your growth and, of course, your decisions and influences around you. And then we're going to talk about what can we do to help build our self-esteem. Now, your majesties, you will need a pen and a pad for this one. So if you need to, go ahead and pause the video, go run and get your paper and pen, and let's go ahead and jump into our first topic. So we're going to talk about self-esteem. What is the definition of self-esteem? When we break this apart, self meaning you and esteem mean to hold someone in a high regard. So if we put these two together, this is how you feel about yourself, how your worth, your value and your capabilities as an individual. So this is how you see yourself, how your view reflects upon yourself. Now, we're gonna go right into the second topic. How does self-esteem become low self-esteem? Now, I'm gonna open this discussion up about low self-esteem um, by throwing out a little bit of an English nerd moment here by talking about tabula rasa, the ideology behind tabula rasa. And this was a um, term coined by John Locke. And it states that we are a blank slate. So basically, when a human is born, when a baby is born, they are blank slates. And I truly believe this to be the case because how how does this correlate with self-esteem? I feel that self-esteem is truly influenced and motivated by people around us. Because we are blank slates when we are born, we really don't have a good grasp of what's valuable or what's worthy until people come um, make commentary and state to us what's valuable and what's worthy. And that's when we internalize and begin to come up with our own self values and our self worth. So what do I mean about this? Now, I am going to tell a couple of personal stories, not too many, um, about my childhood. And one of the things that I wanna talk about is of course the color of my skin. Now, I've never, honestly, I never thought about the color of my skin. I never thought that the color of my skin was an issue because in the neighborhood that I grew up in, everyone around me looked like me, okay? Now, some were darker, some were lighter, but it didn't really matter much because I saw that we were all the same. However, that was not the case to some of the children that I played with growing up in school. There was always this contest about who was the darkest. And whichever child, whichever person was the darkest, of course, 
They were the last to pick for games. Um, they were always the ones that we wanted to steer clear from because they were just too dark. And unfortunately for me, <laughs> unfortunately for me, um, I, I am considered very dark. Um, some people may not believe or think that, but I was considered dark. I really abhorred the games that we played where you had to put out your arm and you had to look at everyone's skin tone around you. And if you were the darkest one, sorry, you were out. Um, and that tended to happen to me a lot. And that is when I believe I started internalizing the idea that the color of my skin was a hindrance. It was an abhorrence to me. And I really start to really detest being of a dark skin color. And not only that, not only was I dark skin, I was dark and ugly. So the connotation of being dark and ugly, wow, just imagine the kind of trauma that that put onto, you know, six, seven, eight year old little girl. Um, and that is what I mean by tabula rasa. Um, you grow up and you think to yourself as a child, because children are genuinely innocent and they don't know much about anything until they see it from other people. And this is exactly what happened to me. I thought, I thought nothing of my color before, but then when I was introduced to the fact that dark is dark equates uh, being ugly or not beautiful, I'm going to internalize that because that is a value and a worth that someone inflicted on me that I now will internalize because it's happening over and over and over again. So instinctively, my self-evaluation will go down because I will immediately think, wow, I'm not worthy. I'm not valuable. I'm not treasured. And that is going to take a hit to my self-esteem. Other things that can take a hit to your self-esteem are some of the things that you're watching, um, like TV shows or TV shows that you're watching, movies that you're watching, or the kind of music that you may listen to. Um, if you haven't watched my video, Obstacles Destroying Your Feminine Growth, go ahead and check out Obstacles Destroying Your Feminine Growth because I talk about these things in those two videos. So um, also think about what you're watching. Um, if you're continuously watching shows that uplift and highlight people that, that are not correlating to you and your identity, that also can influence and inflict a negative impact on yourself. And it's very hard to cut off all outside sources around you and give yourself a true evaluation when you're literally, literally stuck in your environment. And it also didn't help for me that, of course, I grew up in a low socioeconomic environment, which me meant that my parents, they were extremely poor. My mother was extremely poor. I come from a single parent household where my mom, she was a great woman. Hi, mom. A great and beautiful woman that literally struggled to take care of her children by herself. And when you're coming from an environment, uh, um, a single parent household, um, low socioeconomic society, that also contributes to your worth as well. Uh, because I was not the child or the individual that always had the new clothes or always had the new shoes. Um, I remember one time uh, when I was in middle school that a teacher actually laughed, I still remember the teacher's name, I still remember the subject that I was in, and the teacher literally laughed at me for having pro wings. Um, I'm not sure if you guys ever, um, if you guys know what pro wings are or if you've ever worn pro wings, but my mom used to buy pro wings for us all the time, and I was literally laughed and called out because I wore pro wings. And when you think about 
some of these traumatic events and occurrences that are happening to you. Now, yours may not typically be a so low socioeconomic background. It may not be because you are a person of color. It may not be those things, but something around you that's happening in your life is creating traumatic experiences and traumatic interpretations that you are taking in and inflicting upon yourself. And that is what's creating the low self-esteem. And let me give you one more scenario, one more personal story to take this home, okay? So I remember when I was in middle school and I never had a boyfriend before. And I was so excited because I finally received what I thought was my first boyfriend and come to find out that we dated one day one day and let me tell you why we dated one day so this particular boy he came up to me and said yeah i want to go out with you blah 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 and i was so excited he was my first boyfriend and then the next thing i knew the next day we broke up and I never knew why. I said, oh, okay, what happened? Oh, well, I only dated you because I wanted to make my girlfriend jealous. Um, I, I hope you didn't take us seriously because one, you're too black and you're t t technically ugly. So I just wanted to make my girlfriend jealous with someone who's black and ugly. And <laughs> I can laugh about it now, okay? I can laugh about it now because looking on the past, I think... That was an experience for me. Of course, I didn't think it was funny back then. I cried my heart out. But looking back on the past, that's exactly what my value and worth was to other people. And because that happened, I internalized that as my true value and worth. I internalized that. And trust me, that's not the first time that anything like that happened to me before. All right. But I digress. Um, I truly believe that the reason why we have low self-esteem is because of other people influences, um, other people influences and ideas about us that they, they put on to us. And because we have those small traumas over and over again, we ourselves start to internalize our own values and our own worth, our own worth because of those ideologies. Now, we're going to get into our next topic on how low self-esteem, how low self-esteem can actually destroy you or hinder your growth. Now, let's go back to um, some of the traumatic experiences I had as a child um, considering low self-esteem. Now, since I've internalized these ideas about myself that one, I'm black, one, I'm ugly, I can never amount to anything. Now, those internal thoughts, they're there. They're, they are stuck there. So I'm going to use that, okay, because now my worth and my value is not very significant. I've already internalized that I'm not very worthy. I'm not very valuable. I don't have any confidence. So immediately my self-esteem is completely destroyed. So how does this hinder me? Well, because I have this fixed mindset about myself, if you don't know about the fixed mindset, again, go to my videos, Obstacles Destroying Your Feminine Growth. I talk a little bit more about fixed mindset there. Because I now have this fixed mindset about myself, I'm going to self-sabotage. Um, I don't think that I can go after this really great job because I'm not worthy and I'm not valuable. I don't think I can have this really great um, this really great guy and this really good career. I can't make this much. Um, I can't make this amount of money. I can never be this because of the self-esteem and the value and the worth that I've placed on myself. Now, the danger of holding on to low self-esteem and allowing it to shape the course of who we are, the decisions we make, the danger in this is sinking into a depressional spiral. Now, depression is very serious. I mean, it is a clinical 
um, disorder that people face every single day. It is very real. It's happening to those all around us. And I really, I feel for everyone, any individual that's suffering with depression. And that's the danger I feel with um, low self-esteem. It can cause a depressional spiral. And the danger with this is that we will, we will lose out on um, so many great potential opportunities for us because we've already linked into our minds. We've already created a self image or a self evaluation that we are just never good enough. And it's technically not the problem of the person because I truly believe your environment and your surroundings, they have a big impact on who you are. And yes, we can overcome our environment. We can overcome our situations, but trauma is exactly that. It is trauma. And trauma can sink us into these depressional crashes, these spirals, and these places that we don't want to find ourselves ourselves in. And when people say that words don't hurt, words are not influential, well, they're wrong. They are. I really dislike the cliche, um, sticks and stone may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true. Words will hurt you. And words are essential. Words are biblical. Let me, let me give you proof. Consider this scripture from the Bible. We're in James 3, 3. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of all the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and it set itself on fire by hell. Now let's jump to the next verse. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bears figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So what exactly are we talking about here? What I'm talking about is that words have meaning. Just our words alone can build and tear someone. We can build someone up and we can tear them down. We can praise someone one day and we are cursing them the next. So how is it not possible for people's words to influence another person? How is it not possible that we can influence ourselves with our own words? We can and it is happening every single day. This is destroying our livelihood. This is destroying the choices and the decisions that we are making. Um, sometimes we just catch ourselves just hating ourselves. And we haven't quite figured out why. Well, it's the words that we give to ourselves and there's the words that other people give to us. We're always being evaluated like we're on a stand. We're being judged and evaluated every single day by people, even ourselves, that shouldn't be doing the judging. We're not the judge and jury. Someone else is. And thank God, he's the only person that's the judge and jury. Because if that was the case, if everyone can decide our value and our worth, then we really would be considered nothing. And you see how that this, this kind of ideology, this thought 
can completely destroy an individual. So how do we get from low self-esteem to healthy, positive, and nourishing self-esteem? Well, let's go ahead and get into our last topic. We are going to talk about how we create and build a healthy, nourishing self-esteem. The first thing first, therapy. I am an advocate for therapy. No, I'm not a licensed therapist or anything like that, but I am a strong advocate of therapy. Yes, I know sometimes, especially in um, the black community, we have this stigma about going in to, um, to get therapy, going in to get help and treatment um, because there's a false ideology or a false sense that we don't want to tell anyone our business. We don't trust people. And that's very valid. Honestly speaking, sometimes the thought that people of color have about um, people in a position or authority or especially medics and things like that, I can understand our hesitation and our issues with trusting people um, that are in positions of taking care of our brain or taking care of our bodies and things like that. I completely understand, um, which is why I firmly believe that just because you're going to a doctor or a therapist, it doesn't mean that you have to stay with that person. I don't think we realize that we can shop. <laughs> we can just like you can go to a grocery store, just like you can go into a dress store and you say, oh, no, I don't want this. Another place may have it or it might be better somewhere else. That's the same thing when we have a doctor or we have a therapist. We can literally shop around. Let's look. For therapists, let's look for people that are empathetic towards us, they're honest and they're truthful towards us, and they can really help. Um, trauma is very serious and, and it doesn't matter how small. If these are things that you are internalizing and that you are keeping to yourself and it's tearing you down and you feel as if you cannot function because of these false ideologies that you've internalized, my best advice is therapy. Therapy, 100%. Make sure you get therapy. Um, do your research. Go um, make, Know that you can shop around and go and get the counseling and the help that you need. That is really going to help shape and transform and change your life. The next thing that I think will help with your low self-esteem is the idea of stop idolizing. And I talk a little bit more about this, of course, in my videos. Um, go ahead and watch my previous videos, but stop idolizing. The things that you are watching, if it doesn't correlate to you, if it doesn't correlate to the values that you wish to implement with yourself, um, if it doesn't align with your beliefs, then just stop watching them. Stop watching them. Stop listening to them. Uh, you're internalizing it and you're evaluating yourself based on those things. Like you're literally placing yourself in the thing that you're idolizing on a pedestal and you're weighing which one is more valuable and which one is more worth it. Stop idolizing. Idolizing is... <sighs> Trust me, I've experienced that as well. It is, it is very self-destructing and just self-sabotaging. So stop idolizing. That will help with your self-esteem as well. Another thing that I want you to consider, of course, surround yourself with people that are going to help you. Surround yourself with positive nourishing and valuable people, all right? And what I mean by this is that, of course, if you have toxic friends, toxic family members, and things of that nature, it's time to take a step away uh, because you are worthy and you are valuable. And if you're, you have someone, as you're going through this change and you have someone that is constantly feeding into you negative thoughts, negative beliefs, um, those, those type of people, people, you need to lovingly pull yourself away from them and you need to first get your values, your core values, your 
core beliefs down. And you need to surround yourself with people that is going to love on you, that will pray for you, that will help you through this journey. Um, Self-esteem is, is very detrimental, if not taken care of. So you need those, you don't need a yes man. Now that's the difference. Let's talk about that. You don't need a yes man. You're not going to, you don't need someone to say, yeah, you know, you need someone that is honest with you. You need someone that's going to give you the truth, but give you the truth lovingly. You need someone that even though you're struggling, that they will still help you even though you're struggling. You need someone that's going to uh, fill you with, with things that you know aligns with your core values and beliefs. Let's surround ourselves with those type of people. And watch how your life change. When you surround yourself with those people, you will see how your life will change. My next idea to um, helping you overcome low self-esteem. Um, I absolutely love um, this advice that one of my best friends gave me. Of course, she's also one of my colleagues that I work with. And I love, this is the best advice that she's ever given me. And she always tells me, because we're English teachers, she tells me to consider the source. And if you're an English teacher, you always know about sources anytime you're writing anything sort site 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 sources 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 and she always tells she she tells me to consider the source now what she means by this is that consider who you're hearing the information from are they credible do they have the qualifications and the credentials to evaluate you even yourself do you have the qualifications and the credentials to evaluate yourself now you may say to yourself of course i do it's me i i'm me i'm the person i i of course i can qualify and evaluate myself no 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 are you talking about the person that's traumatized that's internalize the fact that you're not valuable and you're not worthy and you're not important that you're ugly that you're black that you're not beautiful no you're not valuable you're not i mean no not the fact that you're not valuable but no you're not credible all right you are not a credible source because you already have a negative thought about you or you already have a negative opinion about you you're not credible which means that therapy is going to be your best friend surrounding yourself with people who have your core values and beliefs at heart they're going to become your credible sources until you're able to internalize that yes i now understand my value my worth so i am credible but at this point, if you have low self-esteem and it's really destroying you, at this point, you're not a credible source, okay? So we have to get those people who can be. And your boss, whether it's your boss, whether it's friends, whether it's your parents, consider, are they credible sources? Do they have the qualifications to evaluate you? And by the way, they should be evaluating you based on your actions, based on your performance, not how you feel about yourself, not those type of things, okay? And my last thing, of course, please don't get upset, okay? The last thing that will help you I on- hurt my hand. You hurt your hand, baby? Okay, let me see. The last thing that I truly believe that will help you with your low self-esteem and moving it from low to healthy, nourishing self-esteem, of course, is God. Yes, I have to say it. I'm sorry, Team Jesus over here all day, every day. And yes, um, God, get your praying game together. Open your Bibles. Go to a church. Make sure it's a church that's going to teach you the word and the word, okay? It, it needs to be a church that is faithful and true to the words and the teachings of, a, of the Bible, okay? okay. So, yes, pr your praying life, 
your fellowship life, biblical aspirations, um, affirmations, sorry, biblical affirmations. Um, sometimes people always say, well, say positive affirmation, positive affirmations. Um, I find that positive affirmations um, doesn't really, it don't really help me. Positive, oh, you're just telling myself, staring in the mirror and telling myself, oh, you are beautiful. You know, your skin color is not an issue. You are black, you are beautiful. I like to tailor it to what I know to be facts. And yes, I know that being black and beautiful is a fact. That is a thing. And no, I'm not saying that it's not. It is a thing. But I like biblical truths because I feel that if I can get biblical truth, then I feel much better. It's not just my words. It's God's words. It's not just human words. It's God's words. And his word is that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm going to tell myself that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He literally took his time to create you. In Genesis, he literally took his time to create the woman, the female, Okay, he made male and he made woman. But when I read Genesis, I see that he took his time crafting and creating and perfecting me. And it's something about that that just really incites a feeling of overwhelming love and joy because he took his time to do that for me. So I tell yourself biblical affirmations. I really believe in biblical affirmations. I have um, scripture and everything on my mirror in my bathroom. Yes, I have a little war closet that I go into to pray, to, to hang up my sticky notes, everything. Have your biblical aspirations, affirmations. I think that is truly going to help as well. And, and after time, it's everything is not just going to happen spontaneously overnight. Even when you're getting your therapy sessions, even when you're surrounding yourself with friends and people who are, who are positive and nourishing, even when you do all of this, just know that it's not going to happen overnight. You're not just going to wake up and say, oh, I feel better all of a sudden. Um, these negative and horrifying thoughts, they are finally gone. You know, I finally have some value and some worth. Now, can God do that? Of course he can. However, sometimes it takes time. And I want you to know and understand that it will take time for you to go back and basically refocus all of the things beliefs that you've internalized to yourself all of those negative thoughts all those negative beliefs it's going to take time don't give up try your best um just hang in there and really give yourself some mercy and some grace all right i hope this video helped you all on how to build a positive and loving and nourishing self-esteem Please let me know in the comments what you think about this video and give me a thumbs up. And of course, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and press that bell notification. I'll see you next week, my queens. Have a majestic day.